Hi guys, and uh, happy weekend. I hope you are doing great. Um, we missed a couple days uh, of streaming, or I think it was just one. Uh, I'm not sure. I was uh, I was sick uh, at least uh, entirely yesterday, and uh, still pretty sick right now. But I thought I'm gonna. Uh, I'm working on some characters, uh, characters sketches. So I thought I'm gonna do a quick stream and just kind of uh, stream some 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 work. Um, it's it's hard to talk for me right now because uh, I'm almost stuffed up and my throat hurts. But so yeah, it's gonna be a pretty quiet stream, and uh, I'll just kind of go through a process of creating these little thumbnails of characters. Uh, so I did three pages and uh, uh, just started a new one. So I'm working on this little spaceman doodle. Alright, so I'm just using a very basic hard round brush with uh, some opacity and uh, starting to build up some values. What I want to do is have a really solid, nice graphic read, so I'm uh, trying to build up uh, a decent value separation and by value separation I mean uh, when I zoom out I can see where one shape starts and where another one ends type of thing I'm gonna do a few of them, so I'll show you this entire process from the beginning. Just making sure that my shapes kind of wrap into perspective to create illusion like they are actual 3D shapes as opposed to just uh, flat rectangles. He's some kind of a jetpacker guy who got little jets strapped to his uh, ankles. Once I have my values established, I like to disable opacity and refine the silhouette without any opacity just just so I have nice clean uh, shapes without uh, messy muddiness. And these are really quick sketches so I spend uh, maybe 15 20 minutes max on each.
you can use a smudger brush to uh, to have this uh, high ground smudger. Uh, what it does, it like it moves the shape around without blurring out too much, and it's help helpful if you want to refine the shape of it. So you can do like. Basically, it's like a move brush and in ZBrush lets you sculpt the format a little bit better. Or grab something and move it. Oh, wrong brush. And move it like this. Add in a little bit of a darker value under the head thing, just to separate it better. Make the make the pose a little bit interesting. So I have like a little notebook in his hand, and the other hand is kind of just pointing pointing scratch, which doesn't not, not make any sense. So I'm just gonna select the the hand and the forearm and rotate it. Just a very loose kind of hand shape. Same here. The great thing is the thing about this is unlike the the line drawings that I do, these are very quick and they allow for very fast iteration. You can see the concept as a whole and uh, judge whether or not you want to continue working with it. And if not, you can, you only lose 15 minutes of work. And, well, you don't lose anything technically because uh, it's, it's a practice, right? If anything, you gain. Let's turn that thing that's behind his back into a backpack. He's a little robot flying to school. Or maybe space schoolboy. Who knows? Grabbing dark value and then with opacity enabled, building up the form and refining the shape a bit more.
good enough. These are quick sketches, so as soon as it's readable and looks well from the distance, we can move on and start working on the next one. One thing I would probably just clean up a bit is this part. Alright, so next one. I have no idea what, what it's gonna be, so just uh, starting up with a few lines. I'm just kind of starting to doodle a shape, getting a feel for it. And you could like even do something like this by just like duplicating uh, line work, mirroring it over. And now with the bigger brush I can start getting the silhouette in. Maybe it's a robot of sorts. I've been used doing that same um, leg design that goes like this a little bit too much, so I'm trying to come up with something new. Maybe it's more of a, they would be more like humanoid legs. Some kind of a robot priest. Go away. One thing I think I can do is to uh, play with the shape more. Use that uh, the hard round brush to smudge things around and Getting a feel for the shape.
coffee to help me with the cold. One of the problems is I'm drawing a little bit too large. It's, it's a bad habit. Uh, so it's hard to see the overall picture when you zo zoomed in too far in. somewhere Starting to refine a little bit. Tom was trying to start a call, but he... I don't see him. 
Alright, so time to get some feet placed. Feet are pretty hard. Um, the trick that, or the guidelines that I'm trying to use is try to avoid doing stuff like this, because then it looks funny. Get the direction more or less right. And uh, the, uh, the heels should be more or less, if, you're, if you want them to be look like they are on the same level, you want to be able to draw a line and have a heel land and then there's a little bit would be a little bit of a slant at the angle uh, the perspective angle so and then flip a can the canvas and see if it looks weird I to adjust it slightly I like that rectangular kind of a frame. It's interesting.
maybe I'll try that initial design that I wanted to have, that kind of like a skirt type of a shape. And you can see with this uh, smudger brush, I was able to change a uh, pretty major proportion with just one stroke. Which is pretty cool. Maybe he's got the wheels there.
I'm giving him a little baby hands. I feel like the feet are a little bit too large. So I'm squishing them down. And then extending the lower leg. And then if I grab uh, just a, a darker value and making my brush smaller, I can uh, just uh, give a little bit of uh, loose direction for what the details are here at the um, at his, in his pelvis area. All right, good enough. Uh, I can always come back and tweak more later. Let's do another one. Just a very loose humanoid doodle, nothing extraordinary here. Oh, what happened? There we go. And then starting to fill in the silhouette and build up some kind of a design, some, some kind of a shapes uh, to establish this design language. Ah, where's my 
cool mix. Some kind of a Cyberman thing. I'm talking about Cyberman from Doctor Who. It helps to have some kind of an object in the, in the hands to make it a more interesting pose. Hi Cropper three one one three one one. How you how's it going? His knees are obviously too low right now. We can use the mover to shape it a bit. How was the weekend? So I'm using um, the smudge brush to just kind of create a random whatever pattern that I can use to interpret the, the shape out of it. And I guess you, you can easily like extract an arm, just kind of get the shape going and then refine it later. And they're all cyborgs, so their arms are weird. So 
disabling the opacity and starting to uh, create the value separation pass. So this would be something like this. The darker value goes in here because it's in the shadow. I want some of the mid grays in the face because right now it's pretty light and then there's some dark stuff there. What's the game is about? I was gonna work on a, uh, one of my game projects today, but couldn't get a couldn't get the proper uh, the source control to work. So I message my programmer, and I'm doing painting in the meantime. <laughs> it's my sick uh, sick Saturday. Maybe we give him some kind of a... Cape. He's like a little hermit that lives in a desert. And he collects scraps and uh, builds robots out of it. That's the story. is a little bit too large so let's scale it down move it to the side sweet yeah i've been uh, i've been playing uh, castlevania symphony of the night for the first time uh on my emulator uh this morning uh i freaking love it it's so good speaking of 2d side scrollers Really reminds me Dark Souls actually. Like there's a lot of similarities that I didn't expect to see. And I've been painting with the hard hard round brush, it's time to try something else so I'm switching to a more uh, square brush There we go, I turned him into Batman. Uh, PlayStation 1, man. PlayStation 1. That was... I don't know, was PlayStation 1 before 360? Pretty sure it was. I don't know what the order they were released in uh, North America. I'm, I'm from Europe, so... Well, not technically Europe, but close to Europe. Um, so... Uh, yeah, my last console was uh, Sega Mega Drive. 
but thankfully technology allows replaying these awesome games. So I've been I've, I've been playing Zelda: A Link to the Past a lot from Super Super Nintendo, and uh, uh, now just started uh, Symphony of the Night, and it's quite fantastic. Really nice game design there. I didn't like this entire shape of the lower half. And that's extended. So you can see I just copy, uh, duplicated a uh, part of the shape and it created this uh, interesting little kind of organic overlap that almost feels like a just very handmade, out of scrap type of armor of sorts. So I'm playing more with this, sh with this shape language here. And I kind of want to extend it to, to the legs as well. So let's see if we can extract this. I'll just might be a little bit too much so I'm gonna clean up and simplify it a bit Right now the graphic read is a little bit troublesome, it's hard to tell what's going on. I just kind of like that organic robot in a worn clothes look. So let's try to clean it up. This is gonna be our cape. Uh, maybe make it look more like clothes and then actual armor is sticking through it. And then he would have some kind of a belt with a fanny pack because robots need fanny packs.
when machines took over the, the world, they forced fanny packs onto everyone. And that's how human humankind died, they went extinct. Fanny packs. That's my backstory for this character. Fanny pack apocalypse. Not looking too terrible. Maybe give him an, a better pose. I was thinking maybe I'll give him a dog or something. Gotta be a robot dog with a fanny pack. I never drew a robot dog before, so I apologize for, um, I don't know, I got nothing to apologize for.
cute little puppy. Once again, just using the shapes to create a design language, not worried about shading or anything like that. Purely design. It's a little bit hard because uh, the pose is very like from the side, so I don't see the symmetry or don't quite have the feel for it yet. Back to my reference. Trying to get the feel for the design so it kind of matches the design language of the actual character. Sort of.
typical Winnipeg uh, fire trucks. It feels a little bit condensed. I might stretch the proportions a little bit further out. visit uh, later. So quick three designs. Um, I'm gonna call it a day. I'm not feeling well. Time to have my lemon tea and some hot chicken noodle soup and uh, uh, get better. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you uh, had fun and uh, have a great weekend. And we'll see you later. Cheers. <laughs>